Uh, first of all, give Missouri credit. And they, um, it's a good football team, sit it all week, and, and um, knew it was going to be a battle. They came in, played really, really well, and, and um, you know, give the quarterback credit. He played well, and, um, you know, there's a lot of things that you can look at. We didn't do a great job, obviously, of creating turnovers uh, tonight and, and um, a lot of things. So, starting with me, got to coach better. Um, uh, disappointing because, look, I get the narrative. We have four wins in a row. We have a great win last week. We uh, ranked for the first time in forever. Um, and and guard, no, no, understanding that it's easy to say, okay, South Carolina's going to get complacent and, and not play with the same energy and fire and physicality that they had been. And and uh, they're uh, uh, that watch out. And the disappointing thing is we were obviously on guard for that all week. I thought we had a great week of practice. We really did. Um, guys were focused and, and with great energy, great physicality. Because we were watching closely, I was watching closely in practice to make sure that that we I didn't see signs of, of any complacency. But we looked sure like a t looked like a team on on all three phases in the first quarter and first really in the first quarter we looked like a team that was on our heels and just assumed everything was going to be okay and just waiting for something uh, to happen and just told the team I mean, in this conference it's a freaking grind and every single week. You better be at your best. And um, uh, we weren't as, at our best as coaches tonight. We weren't at our best as, as players. Starts with me. And the only thing we can do is go right back to work because no weeks are easy. Uh, it never are, and especially from here on out. So, questions? Shane, defensively, this team has been resilient, making a lot of halftime adjustments. But just were they doing something you guys weren't expected, like some of the little pop passes to love it? No, nah, they do a great job of just keeping you off balance with formations, personnel groupings, uh, motions, uh, trick plays. You know, I mean, they that's kind of their M.O. And um, uh, they did a great job tonight of the, getting the ball on the perimeter. We didn't leverage it correctly a couple times. It's disappointing because a couple times in the first half, we felt like we had the perfect call for what they ran and uh, pretty much anticipated what they ran, and they still were able to execute and convert on, on third downs, and, and that was a key in the first half. I mean, I think they were, I think they were six of eight, if I'm not mistaken, on third downs in the first half, and, and uh, we couldn't get ourselves off the field. But no, I'll give them credit. They had a, you know, Eli's a, an offensive coach and does a good job, and, and uh, they got skill at the receiver positions. I said that all week. The quarterback's a good athlete, said that all week, and they showed it tonight. Shane, I know that's a really good defense that you guys just played. I guess just what were they doing maybe to, to keep you guys from getting in a flow offensively? Did you see anything, or was it just playing a good defense? Yeah, we we'll need to go back and certainly watch the tape because not even close to being good enough tonight um, from that standpoint. Um, no, nah, I mean, they, they're disruptive and, and disappointing thing. It looked a lot like last year's game. I mean, just their guys up front putting pressure on the quarterback, disrupting guys, getting pressure, stopping the run. Uh, the number eight, the transfer, is, done, is a good player. Their defensive line returned, and, and they're they got length, and, and they're athletic, and they're and they're disruptive. And the new <clears throat> the new defensive coordinator has done a good job, and they're well coached. What uh, what what happened with Marshawn? And then you know, can you tell? Obviously, that affected you. How much did that take you out of what you were trying to do? But then also, can you tell what his status is going forward? Yeah, he should be fine. He's got a pretty significant uh, bruise on his quad. Uh, took a shot in the first half and worked on it throughout halftime, and then he tried to go. But as you guys saw, he just wasn't the wasn't the the same. Uh, I think he'll be okay long term. Nothing uh, significant. We don't think. Certainly, he's a one of the better best running backs in the SEC. So you don't want to play without him. But we've got great confidence in in CBS and and uh, Juju as well. Shane, is Jaheim Bell healthy? Is there any sort of disciplinary Jaheim issue? Jaheim Bell's healthy. If there was a disciplinary issue, he wouldn't have been playing. Jaheim Bell's healthy, and we got to get him the ball more. What, what, how frustrated are you that he had zero touches today? we got a lot of great playmakers on our offense, that receiver, at running back, at tight end. When you play 53 plays on offense and you're uh, 5 of 13 on third down, it's hard to play a lot of plays and, and get all those guys the ball. 
Um, you and Marcus have both talked a lot about how good Spencer has looked in practice, but his numbers have looked pretty similar over the last few weeks. Is there something, you know, are you guys happy with what you're seeing him in game situations, or is there something that's not connecting from practice to the field? No, I mean, I think it's a combination of things. He'll be the first to tell you he's got to play better. we got to protect him better. I mean, there were a lot of times tonight he was under under duress and uh, – and um, made some great plays, some gutty plays, some throws and, and some runs. But no, I, um, we, we've got to continue to, he has looked great in practice. We've got to continue to look at, you know, why not just him, but offensively, we don't have a better carryover from practice to the games. Hey, Coach, uh, that interception that got overturned by that pass interference call in the second quarter, did you ever get any explanation from the officials on that call? I was told that our guy grabbed the Missouri player and pulled him down, which I told them it looked like the Missouri player pulled our guy down. But I don't know. I mean, I uh, thought David got his head around and couldn't really tell on the replay on the board. But What's the latest with Brad Johnson? Brad um, should be fine, had a little bit of a lower body injury. We were hesitant to play him. Maybe he was limited in practice this week, and we felt like he was going to play. Uh, but just as the week went on, just with all that Missouri does from an offensive standpoint with motions and, sh motions and formations and, and personnel groupings, we just felt like he hadn't gotten – the reps, enough reps in practice, and um, that we, we it was best not to play him, but he should be fine for next week. I guess, what did you make of the offensive game plan tonight and, and the aftermath of this? Or anything else you might thought have it was good? We wouldn't have gone into the game plan. We wouldn't have gone into the game if I thought the offensive game plan was not good. Uh, we always feel good about it. We didn't do a good enough job of coaching, playing, executing tonight. Uh, there was a stretch, I think it was in the late third quarter, you guys went a little screen heavy. Is that just sort of a, trying to counter the pressures that they were kind of throwing at you? And when those uh, weren't working, was that them kind of guessing? They weren't screens. Mm -hmm. they, I mean, so I think we called one or two screens that popped out of there. A couple of them were runs that they that were RPO-type plays where we should have kicked the ball out of there. We ran a screen to... Uh, ju Juju to start the two-minute. We ran a couple of true screens on the perimeter. Um, to uh, I think it was Juice or Leggett one, um, you know that they were bringing some pressure and thought they were good calls, and then a lot of the balls that were out there on the perimeter were some runs that Spencer just um, uh, didn't hand it off and, and threw it out there to the receivers. I'm sorry, Ben, what was the second part of it? It's hard to say just without watching the tape. I'll let you know tomorrow on the teleconference. Uh, we didn't, you know, thought we did okay blocking it for the most part, and um, but I'll have to look at it. Externally, there are a lot of folks who think that changes should be made, whether it's play call or quarterback, what have you. Do you have a response to anyone who, who might feel that no, way? No, I understand or? their frustrations. We flat out laid an egg tonight. And um, uh, after every game, like I've always talked about, it was, tonight was not good enough in any phase, and starting with me. Um, but like every game, win or lose, we always get back to work on Sunday morning and uh, see what the issues are, what we did well, what we didn't well do well. But certainly tonight, we were not good enough, and, and we got to figure out um, how to be better. Shane, when things um, just weren't going well there in the first half, like in the second half, did you do anything specifically just find the jump start? I mean, as far as like personnel, play calling, uh, uh, what, what did you try? No, um, felt like we got some really good momentum going into the going into the half, scoring right there before the half. <clears throat> Excuse me, got some great momentum. Um, thought we had a good plan to start the second half offensively. You know, going into the game, Rick, we wanted to play with a little bit more tempo, a little bit no huddle, a little bit more no huddle. Uh, we weren't, we didn't have a ton of plays in the first half, and, and we weren't really able to get into that. But felt like we got in a pretty good rhythm there at the end of the first half, and wanted to continue to do that. And, and thought we had a right where we, I mean we we were down last year I think 14 to nothing to East Carolina and 14 nothing to Auburn I believe uh, so we pride ourselves on being a second half team and felt like okay we were awful in the first half but we finished with some momentum told them at halftime we're a second half team that gets better as the game goes and we didn't do it today you know we went out on offense the first drive and went three and out 
to start the second half and, and punted, which was disappointing. But no, I mean, we just continue to try and coach throughout the game and, and, um, and, um, and go from there. Shane, is there an update on Devani Reed? He's fine. Yeah, it looked pretty serious, but uh, he uh, he's fine. I think him and uh, uh, what uh, Marshawn and and Spalding got banged up a little bit, but we don't think anybody is uh, is long term. Shane, as far as I mean, I know it's still fresh. You got to go through this game and go through the film, but I mean, last year you guys dropped a game to Missouri, came back, beat Auburn. I mean, you guys have been in this position a little bit before, I guess. What do you do with that and take from going into next week, the next, what, four weeks, I guess? And I guess yeah. how, how do you kind of, I guess, is it a learning moment or anything like that for, for you guys going forward? No, I mean, we we um, got to get better. And uh, we've, we you know, had a chance last year. We beat, we won a game at home and we had a chance to get bowl eligible, went out to Missouri and didn't get it done, just like tonight. And then we came back and, and uh, beat Auburn the next week. And, you know, every year is different, but we got a bunch of guys that are, hurting in that locker room right now and are extremely disappointed with the way that we uh, performed tonight. And, um, you know, you, um, you, you, get, you get closer, you get tighter, and you go right back to work and get ready to go play another battle on the road next Saturday night against a team that, that had an opportunity to beat these guys last week in Columbia, Missouri. And, 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 and Vandy that was off today and has had two weeks to get ready for us. So we've, um, we've, we've got to be a lot better. Um, just the one play today, over 20 yards on offense all day. Can you, can you kind of say what that is without watching the film back? Is it a lack of execution or is it something Missouri was doing well? Is there anything you chalk up to the explosive plays not being there? I think you just nailed it. We, they did a good job. We didn't execute. Coach, um, this year in first quarters against Power 5 teams, you have one scoring drive over 19 yards. That was the field goal against Arkansas. Is, is there a trend you can point to why it's just been so hard for you guys to, to come out and put up points early? Um, a trend that we're not good enough um, in the first quarter for whatever reason. And, and uh, we spend a lot of time on how we want to start games and the openers. And it hasn't been good enough, whether it be execution, Play calls, whatever uh, you look at, you look at everything. But you know, I, we uh, we we've got to be better at that and get off to better starts. I mean, we we were a really good football team record-wise when we score first, and when you have first quarters like that, it makes it really really hard. Last one goes to Ben. This is kind of a little on that that same uh, topic, but it, is there almost a compounding effect where the offense, you know, would have a quick drive? Then they're sitting for maybe 12, 13 minutes because the other team, because Missouri just kept kind of. Is there sort of a compounding effect with that? Yeah, I mean that's not an excuse, but it's it's tough. I mean I think um, I looked up in the first quarter and I think we had had the ball for a few plays and there was like two minutes left or three minutes left into the first quarter or something or two series and we were three and out whatever it was. Uh, that's not an excuse. I mean whenever we go out there, I mean I look at you know. Um, you look at other teams that teams try and keep the ball away from them, and when they get the ball, they score. And uh, whether we're sitting on the bench for 10 minutes or 10 seconds, we've uh, we've got to be able to go out there and, and perform um, when when uh, when we're called. It's kind of like when you used to play. When my dad was coaching at Virginia Tech, and you played like the Georgia Techs of the world that just ran the ball and shortened the game and and uh, and and ate up the clock. But when you get out there, you can't press. You got to go execute, and you got to make plays when they. Present themselves, and we didn't. We did not make enough plays tonight. Thank you, Thank y'all. Oh, and thoughts and prayers also to the Dooley family uh, at the University of Georgia. What a legend in college football, and somebody that I really appreciated getting to know during my time in Athens, and was always good to my family and I. So, thoughts and prayers to Coach Dooley's family.